Hey, hello and welcome back and that's right we are continuing our look at Plex Media Server and we're revisiting the subject of Plex Media Server on the F4423 from TerraMaster. This is their new prosumer 4 bay NAS Intel powered 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ready and it's definitely one of the best systems they've released in quite a while. It also arrives with TOS5 on board as you can see here with the happy dog on there and today we are looking at the performance of Plex Media Server, that great third party application that allows you to have all the slick user interface and advantages that are normally bestowed upon uh, streaming services like um, Amazon and Hulu and Netflix but you're using your own media. Now this is the second time I've tested this Intel powered NAS, a NAS that arrives with the N5105 CPU in sight and in my previous test I did some more kind of all over the place testing of 1080p and 4k but I've been recently revisiting a number of different NASs that I've featured here on the channel for Flex largely because a number of you want to know about dedicated Plex performance at kind of like the mid-range to home level for those of you that are ripping from existing DVDs that you own or have been buying kind of lots of 4k media as it's become a great deal more affordable. So in today's video we're going to be looking at 11 different files. These 11 different files are different uh, multimedia trailers in 4k. We'll be looking at different kinds of 4k, IMAX 4k, Ultra HD 4k, different variations of uh, video um, uh, format there in mp4 and mkv. We're also going to be looking at different um, video compact um, uh, revisions, uh, uh, what can I not revision with the word I'm looking for there, file formats, and of course we are going to be tackling the Trixie Dixie subject of H.265 versus H.264, because that is where a big difference lies in a lot of multimedia, but few disclaimers straight off the bat first and foremost as mentioned i've already covered another series of tests on this which should be linked in the description for this nas i am on plex next when i'm going through this test i am using a web browser here and i am using a plex pass with transcoding or hardware transcoding enabled something that will become even more uh, relevant when we're looking at h.265 or hevc media next um, you, I'm doing all of this work in the web browser. I could download the Plex client for Windows, but it's very important to me that we have this set up on screen with uh, no transcoding and no uh, uh, converting of files on the client side. That is my laptop. The reason being the number of you that are accessing your 4K multimedia on a NAS from things like an Amazon Fire Stick or a PS5 or PS4 well, may not be aware that you cannot play back H.265 uh, media or HUVC media on those devices on the client side. You can't use any of the hardware on your uh, Plex stick, I'm uh, sorry, your um, Amazon stick or your TV. You have to rely on the NAS hardware to get the job done. And that has a lot to do with licensing of HEVC media. I won't get into too much detail. And I recommend you check out my other video on Plex for this NAS. As I go into a lot more detail about it. But ultimately it's about a file format. Whether it's officially supported by your device. And if you're using a device that doesn't support it. Which is a lot more than you think. You're going to rely on the NAS to do a lot of the hard work. To convert the file into something you are able to watch. So there we go, those are the files, that's the NAS, that's Plex, there's our trailers and what we're going to do is go through all of our files and I'll go through them one by one as we go through the video to discuss the strengths, weaknesses and what you might see in between. So as you can see already the system operation there is already around about 50 to 60 percent. Now one of the main reasons for that is this NAS has been set up with a few different tools in the background. I could have disabled all of them. I was thinking about disabling a lot of apps. We've got Terra Photos running there in the background. Uh, I hate seagulls. You've probably heard that in the background. Indeed, if we go into that control panel there, while it's running, we've got that indexing happening there in the background. And if we look at some of the uh, resource monitor and stuff that's happening there in the background, we can see that a lot of the system services and processes that are running in the background are stuff to do with the NAS doing its own thing. So again, I could disable a lot of these but I think a lot of you that are going to use a NAS may be running a lot of these services such as utilizing surveillance or other stuff in the background and as you can see with the CPU usage the media indexing there in the background is where the main resources 
are being consumed. So what I'm going to do is make our way back into the system and allow this to go through our Plex Media Server testing. But do bear in mind that that multimedia indexing may have its impact. We can go into it there and if we choose to, we can disable it there and that should free up those resources for us. So what we're going to do is give the system just a little moment to cancel that service, but we're going to leave all the other ones running and then we'll start our Plex Media Server tests. Okay, so now multimedia indexing has been disabled. We can see there the CPU was on to a much more manageable level. We're not going to disable a lot of the first party apps that we're running in the background, but we're going to leave that. We're going to leave those on, but we've disabled that multimedia indexing. So our first file into the Cave of Wonders, it's a 4K file, and this is an H.264 file. So this is uh, a compression technique that's lovely and straightforward and nothing to worry about. It's a 12, meg file, uh, 12 megabits per second bitrate, and it's an MP4. It should play this file with almost no real difficulties there. And on the bottom of the screen, we're just going to open this file up, and we're going to have a little look at our playback settings throughout. So we're playing the file and we're already seeing relatively high utilization there. I'm quite surprised that Plex has needed to utilize a lot more CPU resources than I would have anticipated for a file type of this scale. It's still a 4K file and it's still a chunky little file at that. But again, the CPU is utilizing a little bit more power than I would have anticipated for a file of this caliber. But again, we're not seeing any slowdown, we're not seeing any drop in frame rate, and for now, I think that's running fine. If we skip ahead later into the file, we can have a little look. We've got there in the middle of the screen, it's just timing out there. We've got a delay there of around three seconds there. But for now, that file, I'm going to say that's a success, but I'm still kind of surprised at that amount of utilization of hardware resources there. Now, this next file is a bit of a beast, Roast Duck 4K Ultra HD. This file here, H.265, and it's an HEVC. So again, this is that more complex license required compression technique to allow a file at this scale to be played in the home. Also worth highlighting that this is a 60 megabits per second bit rate. So again, a very dense file here. And this is a file that not every NAS can play. And I have my question marks whether this NAS is able to play it. Let's see. <coughs> Apologies for the cough there. We'll open it up at the bottom. And it is attempting to play the file. We're seeing the ring there. And we zoom out. It is playing that file. And it looks at the bottom like we are getting somewhere. It's taken a little, bar, a little bit of a run up, but it did play this file. And I am going to call this a success. But at the moment, I will say that that buffering isn't quite as far ahead as some might like. It's still a successful playback for me, and it will stay ahead. But CPU utilization up there is something of a spike and definitely something to maybe bear in mind. But for now, I'm going to call that one a success. Next up, this is another HEVC file. This is Beauty of Taiwan, 8-bit, so it's um, same 8-bit HDR, but this time half the bit rate at 29 megabits per second, but still an HEVC file. So we'll play that one there. There'll probably be the same ever so slight delay that we saw earlier on. It's still gonna take a run up and this is a 4K file, so it's got some weight to it. But for now, let's just see how it deals with the file. So it is playing it at the bottom of the screen here. If we zoom in, we're able to see the bright orange, which is the organic natural timeline, versus the dark orange, which is the conversion that the system is having to take on board in order to line up the file for playback. But from the looks of things, it will be able to play back this file. And I think right now, I would still call this an absolute success. Uh, absolute is probably a bit strong. It's quite the success. Maybe if um, we had a more complex codec in terms of audio, we might see a problem there. But given that this is factoring in that encode to change the file into a native playback, overall, high CPU utilization, but playback nevertheless. Which brings us back to um, an MP4 file and back to H.264. So this should be a file that we shouldn't have too much difficulty with, but still nonetheless, I keep saying that, but the CPU on this NAS is certainly able to work a lot harder than we've seen in some of the other NASs out there. And a lot of this is to do with the efficiency level utilized by a lot of these devices. But we're seeing playback. Once again, we're seeing it in the original quality, no drop in frame rate, 
and playback is being outpaced by that um, lining up there, the buffering of that file. It's just surprising just how much utilization we are seeing here. Now, whether that's because we're seeing single core utilization or that the embedded graphics are not being utilized as efficiently as we'd like to see, because I will highlight that we are using a Plex Pass. Just to put that in, just to let you see, as you can see there, we are using a Plex Pass for our dummy um, account there so we can't really claim much more than that but for now we can see that it's playing and that's good enough for me let's go back to the dashboard go to our next test file that's June and again this is a biggie another HEVC file so get ready to see that CPU head into its uppers once again but at the very least because of those embedded graphics we are seeing this file getting playback here which ultimately is what the most important thing is isn't it now i'm going to flick back to the terramaster nas for a moment so this file will automatically pause i can't stop that but what i want to see is how the nas is measuring this resource utilization so let's go into the resource monitor on the nas itself and see how that's running i'm going to let that run in the background and again, as mentioned, the file paused, but for now, I'm still calling that a success. The file played, tick, 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 although, again, CPU utilization does seem to be being reported rather high. Next up, Spider-Man No Way Home, a lovely easy 264 file there. We'll play that one. Remember, all of these are 4K. This is a 4K Ultra HD file at that, an IMAX home theater version as well. And it's playing with the original primary audio stream there. A very dense one there, that DTS HD. At the bottom, playback. There's encoding, and it is staying ahead. Overall, looks like a success for me. Let's skip ahead there. Slight delay as we're skipping forward. Something we're starting to see now that this CPU is working overtime there. And again, that's a delay of at least five seconds at this point. So... Again, not the stone cold success I'd like to see, but we are seeing it at least lining it up there in the background. But that's quite a substantial delay there. And again, that might come down to the efficiency in place here of that CPU. Now, again, let's head back. Now, as we can see here, the average utilization of the CPU is still being reported pretty high there. We can scroll down and see that utilization and their utilization it's pretty high again much the same living at the 80 to 90 mark there and of course there is the overclock when needed if it has to go a little higher there but for now as we go back to the plex media server we can test our next file which is star wars rise of skywalker which is an absolutely dreadful film and i will never let it go again we can go to the bottom there Again, this is a file that we have noticed a few frame inconsistencies with, but I've kept it in because I'm utilizing it across a number of different NASes, so it still has to work with consistency. But for now, running fine, played immediately, skipping forward. We'll see that delay. It's still playing that rather dense audio format there. We're seeing that delay because, of course, when we're skipping forward and utilization is very, very high, that means there isn't a great deal of room for the system to kind of change lanes on the fly. But for now... I'm not sure I can call this playback a success because even if it does start to play now, that's quite a long delay and something we've not seen anything really come through. It's playing it, it's just caught up, but that's been a delay of around 10 to 12 seconds. This is still 4K dense media, but still, nonetheless, I'm loath to call that test a success. We're into our final five files, uh, final four files, even. And this is the Batman again. This is another high-end 4K file, but this time 264, 32 megabits per second. Let's play that one there. Open it up on the bottom. Again, PCM audio there. It's playing. It's lining up the file easily. There's a slight delay from what I can see. But still, nonetheless, it is playing back that file. And utilization has been spectacularly high throughout this. I know this is a, a very affordable box, but I don't think we can ignore just how much CPU work is going into these 4K files. Again, strongly recommend you check out my 1080p testing on the other Plex video for the Terramaster F4423. It's getting the job done, but it is being done with a decent amount of CPU utilization. Third from last file, Black Panther Wakanda. This is um, a 265 file here. Again, quite a dense one at 32 megabits per second. 
I'll play that one there. Again, this is another one of those files where embedded graphics or integrated graphics is going to be hugely beneficial for the CPU. And I think right now we are going to see this file played in a way that non-integrated CPUs um, would struggle with, but still nonetheless, slow old delay playing this file as the system makes enough rope there for itself to uh, kind of plan ahead. And even if we look at the bottom right there, I don't think the lining up of that file is going to outpace playback enough for this to qualify as an absolute success. It's playing an original format there or a original resolution while being changed by encode. But as you can see, it wasn't able to outpace playback, which ultimately means this test was not a success. Down to the last two files, a relatively easy one with one distinction and a very difficult file. This is an IMAX Avengers Endgame trailer, 40 megabits per second H.264, and it's an MKV file. So a relatively um, easy file in terms of compression, although quite a high bit rate at 40, when the highest one we've done so far was 60. This is as close as we've got to that. And it is playing the file. It does look like the file is being lined up faster than that off playback, but not significantly. And CPU utilization, as always, has remained in that 80 to 90% degree throughout that testing. Again, very surprising indeed. We're going to move on to our last test here for Top Gun Maverick. And again, not a lot of NASes have played back this file. It's an H.264 file, sure, but it's 80 megabits per second, which is a very high bit rate for this MK4 file. It's also a very high in 4K IMAX file. So if this file isn't playable on the TerraMaster, I'm not going to judge it too harshly. But I will say that thanks to this system having embedded graphics, it does stand a chance higher than a lot of other systems out there at this price point. We can see that it's playing. We're seeing those opening trailer bits there. And you know what? I'm going to call this a success. It is seemingly outpacing the lining up of that file. It's giving itself 10 to 12 seconds breathing room. And ultimately, even though CPU utilization up here is particularly high, I'd still say this is running fine. And overall, when it comes to playing 4K multimedia on the um, F4423 from TerraMaster, it is possible in Plex. I think you do have to keep an eye on uh, particularly HEVC media, and given the CPU utilization for all of these files, you're not going to have a great deal of fun skipping back and forward and fast forwarding and such. But apart from that, for this price point, it still makes it a very attractive proposition for 4K Plex multimedia at this price point. But just bear in mind that the utilization is high and we've been running this test pretty seamlessly for every other part so that utilization is purely dedicated to plex media server as you can see with plex in green nothing else about the system has been causing that it's just been plex so do bear that in mind thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this video there should be a link in the description to the review of this nas alongside the other tests for plex on the f4423 if you want to learn more, visit the links to the reviews and the videos, or use the free advice section over on NAS Compares to help you choose the right NAS for your Plex Media Server setup, or the free community forum at Ask NAS Compares to learn more. If you do plan on buying this NAS, and this video has helped you, and you're going to shop at Amazon, why not use the link in the description? It helps this channel out because we get a kickback from whatever you buy. It costs you nothing extra, and any money that goes to us as an Amazon associate goes directly back into us continuing do what we do. And me and Eddie, the only people that run this channel, will, will be very grateful. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.